Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Polarizer Podcast. My guest today is Kyle Meyer, a photographer from Norway who makes really cool pictures of cars in particular and beautiful landscapes. I talked to him before in a previous episode, episode 24 to be exact, so listen to that one first to get a good introduction into what he does and what he's about. He's a, he's a cool cat. But before we start the show... I will tell you about our wonderful sponsors. This episode is made possible by Amazon. If you go to thepolarizer.com and you click on the Amazon button, you will land on Amazon.com and he will do all your shopping there like you always do. Difference is we get a little kickback every time you order anything there. So you help the show while you're doing your own shopping. Money will come out of Amazon's end and not your end. So prices will be the same for you. So go to thepolarizer.com and click on the Amazon button to help the show out a little bit. And this episode is also made possible by Onnit. They make a lot of really great supplements. They make stuff you can use for home workouts like kettlebells and battle ropes and uh, clubs with weights in it that you can swing around and workout gear is really good. They also sell nootropics that make you feel good and that make you give you mental clarity, make you fall asleep. And I quite like the on it new mood in particular. Everything that goes up must come down after all, ourselves included. During the day we amp up with caffeine, nootropics, pre-workout and more, all in the name of meeting the challenges in front of us. New mood is the amp antidote, helping you relax and focus on yourself by turning down the noise of the chaos. Designed to give you calm, the carefully sourced ingredients including L-tryptopan and 5-HTP, support your body's natural serotonin production and help erase daily stress. It's great to take before you go to bed, and it'll make you wind down and fall asleep. I mean, that's that's what it always does for me. I love it. The On It New Mood, I can highly recommend it. If you use the promo code POLARIZER, you get a nice amount off your first order, or you can go to the polarizer.com and use the On It link on the website to get to onit.com. And if you don't like the product, they just give your money back. You don't even have to send it back, you just get your money back. That's how much they trust in their product. So what are you waiting for, man? Get some rest, you know, this, these are weird times, these are stressful times, and this stuff will help you calm down. Onit.com, use the promo code POLARIZER, or POLARIZER.com, and click on the link to get your discount. And this episode is also brought to you by Alert. Alert is an iPhone app for people who have food allergies who travel. There may not be a whole lot of traveling going on right now, but that's bound to change. So download that app anyway so you're ready to rock when this shit is over. This app will generate an allergy card for the 14 most common allergies in 44 different languages, which covers more than 90% of all cases. So... Even if you go to a place where you don't speak the language at all, this app will help you communicate that you're very allergic to certain things. You can find it on the App Store by searching for Alert. That's A-L-L-E-R-T, Alert. It's like a mix between allergy and alert, A-L-L-E-R-T, Alert, for food allergies. Or go to alert.com to find more information about the app. And finally, go to thepolarize.com and sign up for the newsletter so you never miss an episode again. I will send out an email every time a new episode drops and follow me on Instagram at Dutch Diederik. Follow me on Twitter at Dutch Diederik and find me on Facebook. All those links are on the polarizer.com as well. Best thing you can do is just to sign up for the newsletter and that's the easiest way to stay up to date right in your inbox. It's all free, doesn't cost you anything and you can enjoy the show every time a new one comes out. All right. Well, Kyle Myers coming up next, and he has some interesting things to say about photography and car photography in particular. We get into all kinds of stuff. We talk about movies. We talk about computers even, man. We talk about a bunch of stuff. Anyway, I really enjoy having him on. So enjoy the show, ladies and gentlemen. Kyle Meyer. Ooh, the intro. Yeah. There we are, man. <laughs> I'm pumped to be here. Well, welcome back to the show, man. Hey, thanks for having me back. Anytime. 
Well, it's exactly a year ago. Well, almost exactly a year ago. It would have been if I was uh, on time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we, we talked about a bunch of stuff, and neither of us could have imagined what the world would be like right now, oh my man. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Beyond words. It's been interesting. How's things Crazy. over there in, uh, in Norway? We took it very seriously in Norway. Um, Norway shut down, basically, from day one. Really? Early March... Um, I guess was the heaviest. So I think it was like March 11th when everything just really like completely shut down. Okay. Um, so we, we all respected those, those guidelines pretty well and we treated it responsibly and it more or less disappeared by late summer. And then, I mean, now just like the rest of Europe, it's having some sort of resurgence, but hmm. it's, uh, it's been an interesting one. Yeah. Well, what I about you guys? Well, we, we went pretty hard in the beginning too. And then we started loosening the rules and people kind of took that as a cue to not care about anything anymore. And now we got like the most cases in all of Europe, I think. Did you? Yeah, pretty hey, much. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What so a title. Since uh, last Wednesday, everything just, it's almost like a full shutdown, you know? So, uh, Brutal. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. Brutal. There are rumors of that here, but I I don't see it happening. I, I think we need the economy to stay open. I, I think everybody kind well, of we agrees. We do too, now. man. But, I mean, it, uh, it's tough. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's tough. tough. Yeah, There's no of, right answer to this one. No. Nobody's correct. A couple of my friends own a, a bar restaurant, and they're, you know, they're just oh, hurting. Wow. It's, uh, Ooh, that's brutal. Yeah. Yeah. How's how's the state been treating you guys? Have you gotten any help, like any welfare or? Um, well, if uh, let's see, they had like a, like a relief package in the beginning for hospitality, but it you know it didn't nearly cover. It was you know anything's better than nothing, but it didn't nearly yeah. cover the income they lost. You know. Yeah. So, so you yeah, know, it, it never it, will. It, it hurts everyone. It's uh, yeah. Unemployment's going up, you know, and you can you can kind of you know you can tell people are under pressure. Uh, yeah, yeah. I the work craziest for, thing has been imagining like which industries aren't going to come back, like the cruise ship industry. Right. That's not coming back after this. That's it. They'll yeah. have like some sort of uh, I don't know, like an indie kind of vibe to the industry, like a niche, really boutique style way of selling. But like the massive way of selling they've been doing before, I think that's gone. Yeah, well, at I least for so. the next decade or so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, until people start getting lazy again. Yeah, well, I really believe that once they find a cure to this thing or a, or a vaccine that everyone takes, uh, it'll it'll be once people are allowed to go back to normal, they'll be back to normal in a week. I mean, you think so? Yeah, I mean, I I can you know I can tell people I I, I noticed it in myself. I still instinctively just go for the bro hug you know or, or just oh yeah <laughs> yeah man it's it, it's it and i stop myself because i because i just forget about it but it's it's such a i don't know if, if you're that kind of person you that yeah. never goes away i think you know i am totally fine with not shaking hands or hugging anymore i'm totally fine with really it. i didn't like it in the first place oh okay i'm cool with an elbow at most but even that feels kind of weird to me still I just want to just, hey, how's it going? Good to see you. <laughs> <All right. laughs> That's it. That's all I want. Just stay a meter and a half away from each other, like everybody. Yeah, it's not even a corona thing. I just don't want to be near people. Okay. <laughs> are, you, are you like a germaphobe? Or a... No, I just, I mean, why do you need it? Yeah. Well, I don't know, I'm not afraid of the germs. My body's strong. I spent a lot of time outside when I was a kid. <laughs> right. It's just, I don't need to be near to every stranger that I meet. Yeah, well, I guess fair enough. I mean, everyone's different <laughs> when it comes to that. Yeah, maybe it's a Scandinavian thing. Yeah, maybe. Although you're <laughs> you're you're uh, half American, though, right? Half American, but the better half has been stuck in uh, Scandinavia for <laughs> yeah. far too long. <laughs> right, right. I feel like I'm there now. Well, I I always uh, notice that when I um, when I travel and I meet people from uh, Sweden or Norway, they're they're pretty stoic and kind of distance 
generally. Damn right. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got to no. protect ourselves. <laughs> we don't need to get close to strangers. <laughs> we got our own to worry about. Right. Well, you know, when when you're in a place that's that cold and you, you know, you yeah. <laughs> yep. You're inside all the time. I mean, like now the nights are starting to get so long that any socializing, especially during Corona, like any socializing dies when the sun disappears. Right. That's it. Uh, and you just go back home and you hide. The only time you're actually days? hanging out with people is at the gym. It's crazy. I like uh, it. How long are your days now? <laughs> um, we just passed the 50-50 mark, right? About almost a month ago. So now we're getting to the point where I think it's, I, I think we're at like 55-60 or 55-45 in terms of daytime to night or nighttime to daytime. Okay. So we're, we're getting there. So I know that's how, how many hours of daylight is that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me and numbers don't get along. <laughs> that was the only way I could make it make sense in my head. All right, when, uh, when does it get light and when does it get dark? It gets dark now at like five forty-five, maybe five thirty. Okay. Uh, getting light, I don't know, uh, eight maybe. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah, but we're getting there. Yeah, I mean we're like the rest of the world, right? It changes to September twenty first. September twenty first, you're fifty fifty anyway. Yeah. So we're not too far from that yet. But during the winter, it gets bad. Right. Then you lose sunlight at like late three o'clock, like three o'clock. o'clock. Somewhere. It's pretty brutal. That's crazy. And if man. you're up north, you just don't see it. There's no sun. That's it. Damn. Just stuck there. It's fun to visit, but uh, that's rough. Yeah, you you gotta you miss out on your vitamin D then, man. Yeah, dude, that's the talk of the town right now. The whole vitamin intake. Everybody's trying to figure out what you need. After all this corona stuff, I mean, it's it's super important to get your vitamins wherever you can and keep the immune system up. We're lucky enough in that we eat a lot of fish, typically, so the omega-3 and stuff, that's fine. We got plenty of it. But um, like vitamin D, we missed from the beginning, so we need that. So now I think uh, the vitamin industry is going to boom. <laughs> all right. That's a well. weird one. But uh, that's a good place to be at the moment. Yeah, Sell well, those powders to people and buy your stocks, man. Dude, I would. If I was making any money this year, I would. <laughs> <laughs> that's the uh, the other downside of this year. Yeah, it's the um, it's the photo. Um, are you noticing it in the photo jobs that it's going down? I I imagine you know. Yeah, uh, I mean, like I said, March 11th. The the date March 11th stands out so much to me because that was my last. Um, shooting day before all the corona stuff hit. March 11th. I was shooting with uh, the Norwegian Air Ambulance, funny enough. Um, Norsk Luftambulanse. Very amazing people. They do awesome, awesome work. It's, uh, it's a company basically that's hap- like partly funded by the state and partly funded privately. But they, I think, but yeah, basically they run all like the air rescues around Norway primarily. Um, and we were shooting in a helicopter and one of the guys on the shoot had corona he tested positive oh shit so then i got symptoms like two or three days later and the first day that i got symptoms i was on the couch just dying <laughs> not literally i mean it wasn't that bad for me i'm young and healthy enough I, I fought it off pretty fast but um i was not super excited and i got phone call after phone call from clients who were just canceling everything the next month so I think the next like month, month and a half worth of work was canceled in like five hours that day. Fuck. And from then until maybe June, uh, I didn't like I didn't hear anything. That was it. Damn. It was a strange time. It was really weird. So I had to come up <clears throat> with shit to do. Just keep myself busy. So what do you do? It was weird. That, what did I do? Um, in the beginning, I bought like a bunch of um, like podcasts and stuff, equipment stuff where I could build like a little studio within my house and just sort of record myself doing things like editing old photos. Um, I did a bunch of live streams on YouTube where I was editing photos and like took questions from the chat and let them help me edit and stuff. That was super fun. Yeah. I made made a lot of cool connections that way. You, you, it's cool when you get people invested in the process like that. That's cool. Man. I thought it was going to be a little strange. Like people would tell me how to edit and be like, well, that's wrong. But people are so supportive. It's so fun. You learn so much. So that I enjoyed a lot. So you just hop on there just, and then people join in? Sorry? You just hop on there and people just join in? or? 
Yeah, so I would just like I have this whole live stream set up like the this is my background basically and I have I mean like we said before the podcast I have all the same equipment as you the roadcaster and I have a screen and I just started editing and hit live stream on YouTube and just kept inviting people on Instagram to come watch and hang out and I got a bunch of photographers who just hung out in the chat and were like oh this is cool to learn or what if you tried this? What if you cleaned up this? And then we just like play with things. I had it like three, four or five photos in the space of an hour and a half. And oh, it's a super good time. It was really, really fun. I had That's a lot cool, of fun. Man. I do want to do more of it. I, I really enjoyed it. Nice. Yeah. That's, so that's one of the things that I learned. And then, uh, the other most important thing for me was, um, just reminding myself what it was I wanted to take photos of. I think the last year I had built a client base that was like not really reflective of my interests and my personality. I was shooting with a lot of people who didn't directly like interest me in terms of uh, like what they did and stuff, like a lot of hospitality, a lot of like food. And they were super like fun clients. They were super nice and they were really good um, like bread and butter kind of clients. And I, I, Butter kind of clients with food. Cool. Uh, <laughs> but um, I realized that if I was going to live off photography, I had to sneak in some of the stuff that I was more passionate about. Right. So uh, I started really focusing on cars and car photography. I saw some cars new of pictures of, of some new Porsches, man. Dude, <laughs> Porsche, Porsche runs deep in me. When, uh, uh, we, we can have a look at that uh, while we, uh, uh, while we talk it. about it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Do you have, do you have anything pulled up? Yeah, hold on. I'll just go to your Sweet. website. Yeah, like Porsche has always been just this iconic brand to me, um, as they are to any other car nerd. Uh, so it, it was a super awesome pleasure to get to work with them. Um, and I kept reaching out in the beginning to people who had old Porsches. I love old Porsches, like old 911s, air cold stuff. And uh, just saying, hey, if you guys want photos, let's take some photos. Let's see, here we are. Yeah, there we go. Nice. The cycling homepage. Let's see. <laughs> Are we looking yeah, at work, work or you probably find quite a bit? Man, look at that. Look at that website. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's a good looking website, man. I think it needs to be updated. I think it needs to be completely overhauled. Yeah? Why? I don't know. I just get bored of it. I just want to change things constantly. Right, I know the feeling. Yeah, it's frustrating, isn't it? Yeah. Like yeah. everything you've done, you just constantly want to go back and be like, I wonder what it would look like if I did it different. I think that's the secret of making things as good as you can, though. Let's see I what, hope so. What, what, what do we got here? Tell me about uh, these photos. Yeah, so like, this is... Like what's the, what's um, this the, is the process newest. here, you know? Like, the, like with the lighting and the shadow, like you did some cool stuff here. Thanks, man. I, the key for me was to really learn how light plays off a car. Um, when you're lighting cars, it's entirely different than lighting anything else. Like human faces, it's pretty easy, right? You don't want shadows from below. You, it's, it's pretty like it's pretty played out. But with cars, there's so much room for interpretation and play. One of the goals was to limit myself to one flash for like 90% of the photos that I take. Um, okay. So. If you see a photo that looks like it has multiple flashes, typically it was me shooting multiple photos and compositing. Really? Um, so stuff like this with the, the 992 from um, Porsche Center, Oscar and Bottom, uh, that just had one flash shot super high just to see how light would play off. No softbox or anything, just straight bulb onto the car. That's how you get that rich color. And then that's natural light. Um, that, so I've been shooting a lot with this Porsche center in Norway called, uh, Oscar and bottom Porsche center, Oscar and bottom. They've been awesome. They've been super nice. I've been friends with them since, uh, last year and they just opened up officially last year in November. So I thought this year, like, why not just reach out to them and see if they want to team up. So they were nice enough to let me borrow this red nine eleven uh, oh, wow. first and took it out, drove it around, got some really Fun photos. I shot the hell out of it. I think in the span of 24 hours, I think I had like five photo shoots with that thing. <laughs> it was super productive. So how, how do you you just uh, take a friend with you who drives it while you take pictures of it? or? Yep. Yep, basically. 
So most of the shots, um, like that one there, that was done in post. Like they they weren't moving. The car wasn't moving. Okay. Um, it's mostly just to put somebody in the driver's seat so it looks like somebody's driving it. Right. That's more natural. <laughs> if you do it on the photo, I don't know if you can see it in that one, but um, it's so weird when people have a shot of a car moving and there's no driver. Right. It's just a seat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it looks like a video game. Yeah, exactly. But uh, me and my friend that day, we woke up at four o'clock in the morning to take the car out and just go explore and drive. Man, that's a cool picture. Thanks, man. Those photos have been everywhere now. Do you <laughs> do you do anything with the color here? Like, do you pull other colors out of the photo to to make the red not, pop more? Or not too much. Uh, some of the blues. I, I'm not a huge fan of the sky or like things being blue because the sky affects it. Like, for example, if you're shooting a white car, typically in daytime, you'll have a lot of blue reflected off the car. I don't like that. So one of the first things I do to a photo like that is I pull down some of the blues. But in terms of color, I think that's about the only thing I really did. Man, this one's cool, too. Take lights on. Yep. Shout out to uh, my girlfriend and my camera bag. So <laughs> my girlfriend was holding the flash uh, just off screen, and my camera bag was on the brake pedal to keep the <laughs> lights on. <laughs> it's a team effort. I like the shadow that it throws, too. Thanks, man. Yeah, one light. One light is all you need to keep a photo really interesting. You just need to learn how to play with it. Yeah. Well, and the fact that your that this landscape is gorgeous also helps with these photos, man. Yeah, that's that's a road that I learned about quite often on my uh, ski trips during the winter. I just knew it was going to be pretty. So uh, immediately woke up at four in the morning, picked up my friend, and we went out to go take as many photos as possible on that road. Super, super fun day. We just shot like tons. Mm, and they just, a red Lamborghini. And they, yeah, that, that was the other one that I saw. <laughs> that's a new one, too. Yes. I think that that one wasn't on there uh, last year. Nope, that's new. I shot that, I think, two weeks ago now. Uh, with the guy, his name is Johnny. He has this Lamborghini Huracan Performante, which is like a badass car. At one time, it was the fastest car on a track in the world. Oh, my God. Um it's a monster, that thing. It's That's scary. like 800 so the idea horsepower to, or something? Or? Yeah, 610 or something. That's no, ridiculous. I, I don't know. It's got to be more. It must be more. I don't remember, though. Let's see. Well, we can look it's, it a, it's a scary car. The uh, the aerodynamics on that car are what sell it. It's uh, just absolutely nuts. It's built to go fast. It's built to stick to the ground harder when it does go fast. It's, it's got a ten, pretty gnarly. 10-cylinder engine. 630. Oh, yeah. So it's, yeah, there you go. 630 out of a naturally aspirated V10, I think. Oh, that's sweet. I love naturally so aspirated cars, man. It's loud as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a hard car to shoot, though, because the moment you park it, you get five or six people walk straight up to <laughs> ask a question. So often. It, it's so brutal. Like that spot that we're shooting there. Have you seen the movie Tenet? Uh, no. Just came out this year. Uh, maybe you haven't been to the movie theater much this year. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a Christopher Nolan movie, and this this spot was used as one of the locations in the movie. Oh, really? It's the Opera House. Super popular and ultra busy. So that that was a pain in the ass to shoot. A lot of little kids just waiting to go up and take a look at the car. Yeah, I mean, that's those cars are just pieces of art, you know? People yeah. just want to go. Oh, my God. Every time I see one of those things, I just want to look at it and look at the interior. And Yeah, and why wouldn't you? It's it's sick. I mean, that, that car costs so much money. There's no chance I'm ever going to buy it myself. Did you guys <laughs> drive it? Uh, no, no, not that one. Uh, that one, we just sort of kept moving for the sake of moving. We didn't have too much time. So, But uh, if you scroll down on that page, you can see the photos where he's chasing us. And there in like the woods when the, so the car one, was chasing us. Yeah. Yep. I was standing in my friend's... Uh, Porsche 911, 1978 Porsche 911 SC, and there was no roof. So I was just standing up, pointed backwards, shooting the car, <laughs> which was such a rad sight, probably from the outside. That was fun. That was a fun challenge doing rolling shots. I don't do that too often. How fast were you driving there, and what kind of shutter speed do you uh, use? Um, so to get it, because it's such a wide angle lens, to get it to look like, I think that we were shooting at like 35 millimeters. 
Okay. To get it to actually look like it's moving and to have some of that blur in the ground, we had to drive pretty fast. Um, right about the speed limit, whatever the speed limit was for that road. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just assume we maxed out the speed limit. Um, it's pretty easy to do in was, those kinds of cars. Sorry? It's pretty easy to do in those kinds of cars, you know. Yep. <laughs> You do it without even noticing. You don't feel it. It's just super safe. But it was it was fun. It was super interesting. Really cool experience. And the one thing uh, I guess I would take away from that is if you're going to do rolling shots directly behind a lead car, you have to protect your paint. You have to protect your what? <laughs> your paint on the car. Because there are a lot of rocks that get kicked up. Oh, okay. And, uh, oh, that's a good I'm not point. so sure that car was protected well enough. <laughs> That's a brutal lesson to learn. I, I hope it wasn't too expensive. <laughs> well, at least he got some <laughs> nice photos of his car. Yeah, they're sick. They're sick. And uh, I, I think he went and wrapped it right afterwards. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was a fun shoot. Cool challenge just because it's a super popular spot and you have to get in, get it done, get out really fast. Did the people of the, of the Opera House, uh, uh, did they get involved in this shot at all or...? No, no, we, we didn't ask any permission. We just showed up and, I mean, felt it out. The only shot that I had in mind was the one from the top down where I'm shooting from the roof of the opera house. Um, that was really the only one I had planned. And then when we got there, we just sort of played around. I like the way the lines move on the opera house. So decided to park the car up on the sidewalk and get it as if it was driving alongside the building. And uh, that's got to be a fast shot. So I think with that, we only took like five to 10 minutes, shot it, got in the car and immediately drove away before anybody could yell at us. And it was pretty early in the morning. So I think we did it right. That's cool. Well, they're nice pictures. Thanks, man. <laughs> Let's see what else we got Thanks. that's new. We got the Porsche Cayenne Coupe Turbo S. We got a yep. Porsche Taycan Turbo. Yeah, both monster cars, both from uh, Porsche Center, Oscar and Bottom. Both have 680 horsepower. That's a, that's so much power. A lot of horsepower. <laughs> oh, I love this wide angle one. Thanks, man. That that place is it's like a berry farm in somewhere in Norway. It's a legendary road. If if you're into just like Sunday driving in Norway, that road is super common. It's uh it's, it's really pretty. I love the place. Lucky yeah. with the weather too. Norway's uh, it's it's pretty pretty high on my list to visit. I mean, once all this bullshit is over, it's like cheating, man. Shooting in Norway is like cheating. Norway and Iceland makes it too easy. <laughs> you gotta come for sure. I want to, man. I want to. Yeah, we'll go adventure. We'll go find some mountains. Yeah, dude. Yeah, well, I'll uh, I'll definitely uh, you know buy some um, hiking uh, equipment. Do it. My girlfriend and I just uh, last weekend, we went up to the north of Norway just for the weekend, uh, just to get away from the city and go explore. <laughs> yeah, that was my recording yeah. screen. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of figuring this out, you know. Here nice. We go. What, are you, uh, what, what system are you using? Uh, OBS. Yeah, classic. It's the uh, open nice. broadcasting software. It's free and it does everything. So I've used it plenty for YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Are you big on YouTube? Uh, I wish. <laughs> I love it. I enjoy the hell out of it, and I'm currently making plenty of videos to post up there. Uh, but it takes a lot of time. Yeah, the editing is something I'm really bad at. But I'm filming currently a lot of the car photography that I'm doing. I'm filming behind the scenes stuff with a guy named Mott Sanderson. Okay. Uh, super talented video dude, and always up for it. Uh, so th that's been super fun, and we're working on a bunch of videos to show like what goes on behind the scenes uh, when we're shooting cars and kind of like half a review of the car from our point of view as photographers. Okay. Yeah. V video yeah. stuff is definitely a lot of people think like, Oh, you know, if you, if you're a photographer, you can also do video. It's pretty much the same, but it's really not. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> this shit's hard. Yeah. Video stuff is hard, dude. It's so difficult. It takes so much more work. The post processing is just insane. You got to be a psychopath to like editing video. Every really strange person. <laughs> you uh, you ever watch uh, Peter McKinnon on YouTube? Yeah, a little. Yeah. Yeah, 
It's, it's inspirational stuff, man. It's uh... oh, for sure. He's a good guideline. It's nice to have those guys, those those guys who are actually putting in the effort to get better and share those techniques. Yeah, it's rare. But you know, those those folks have uh, like five million followers, and they that's basically their job. You know. Yeah, it'd be nice. I, I would love for that to turn into a job for me. Um, I did a couple sponsored streams with uh, Sony. Cool. That was super fun. So Sony let me like review some of their equipment on stream and sort of show off how I use the camera because I am a Sony ambassador. Yeah. Um, so they, they just encouraged me to like edit some photos and show like why it's cool to have however many megapixels you have in your camera, why it's useful, what kind of like, I don't know, <laughs> like what kind of lenses Sony can offer that can get you what kind of look on your photos. And that was fun. It was, it was fun to do those streams. That was, that was weird. Yeah, well, especially yeah, if you get nice tools to, uh, nice toys to play with, you know. Always. Always. <laughs> Sony's and cars. Sony's and Porsches. <laughs> <laughs> What's your main camera right now? Uh, right now, my main camera is the A7R three. Okay. Um, I considered going up to the A7R four, but I don't need 61 megapixels yet. Right. Not yet. I will. I will soon. But for now, I just want to keep it as easy in terms of post as possible. What do you What are you going to need sixty one megapixels for? Car photography. Okay. If uh, If I really want to get in there and start removing reflections and just doing like fine tuning in posts, or have like better like quality files for other people to post process, then I, I need as much information as possible. It helps so much to have a bigger picture, especially if it's like, I don't know if there's like a cigarette butt or something on the ground of wherever you're shooting and it's in the reflection of like the headlights, but the headlight has so many details already that you don't want to get rid of. Oh man. Yeah. It, it helps to have that information. <laughs> That's crazy. But, uh, I'm not that picky yet. I'm more <laughs> about the lifestyle at the moment. I'm not so much about the uh, fine tuning. What about? I'll uh, get there though. What about medium format? That's what a lot of uh, product photographers do too. You know, the Hasselblad it's stuff. Just, just not fast enough for me. Yeah. It's I slow, also need, you know, I need to be able to carry the camera up a mountain and go skiing with it. I can't risk medium format with that. Yeah. Okay. Well, you get 150 megapixels if you... <laughs> yeah, Jesus. I, I don't think my laptop could handle it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd be fun though. I mean, I've I've... Played with Phase One a little bit. Um, I know one of the main importers of Phase One here in Norway. Super good dude, and he's always begging me to borrow the camera. And I mean, in all fairness, I'm always begging to borrow the camera. Um, <laughs> but that's just too much responsibility for me. I can't spend fifty thousand euros on a camera and not be able to ski with it because right. I'm too nervous. <laughs> it's that, that's yeah. too much. I don't want multiple cameras. I just want one that does everything. Right. Just want to keep it simple. Well, A seven R three does pretty much everything. It does good video too, and yep, yep. For whenever I am doing video, I recently just got the uh, ZV one, the little vlog camera. Oh, is that the like the basically the RX one hundred, but with more vlogging features? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. Is it is it good? Flip screen. It's super super useful. I love that camera. I played with it a little bit up north this weekend. It was super fun. Okay. I'll be using that more for some video stuff. Uh, I mean, it's small enough to just stick in your pocket while you have your main camera, like, ready with you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And just And it has, like, the little Bluetooth grip where you can zoom and stuff on the grip and hit record. Oh, really? But, like, I when we were hiking, I was filming some, like, little snippets. I'll release a video soon where it's just, like, quick cuts of me hiking just because I think it's kind of cool. Um, and when we were hiking, I just kept it in my girlfriend's bag on like an exterior pocket. So every now and then I would just walk up, grab it out of the bag and start filming with it and then put it back in. All right. It's so light. She didn't notice. It's super convenient. Yeah. Well, it's convenient to have a girlfriend with you when you go on a shoot or a hike, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That helps. <laughs> Someone to carry the food. <laughs> The only inconvenient part is I get to carry all the heavy stuff. 
<laughs> then my bag ends up 30 kilos and hers is 10. Well, what kind of lenses do you bring on the on when you go on a series hike? I went pretty heavy on that one because I wanted to get some more nature photos that were tighter. Um, so I brought my 70 to 200 2.8, which, yeah, man, that's a, a monster one. to hike. That's heavy. Um, then I brought a 51.4, and I brought a 16 to 35 2.8. Hold on, fifty-one point four. Yep. Is that what? What kind of lens is that? No, a fi- uh, a fifty millimeter oh, so f- one point four. I'm sorry. Sorry. Fifty one. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. I skipped man. a lot of steps there. My bad. <laughs> no, yeah, but but uh, I'm I'm just tired, man. It's been a long week with the. Uh, it's been know, a long. What have you been up to this week? Just working, man. What are you working? What are you doing? Just, I, I work in IT, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's been heavy. Uh, it's it's always busy, you know. It's always just uh, intense, and uh, yep. and everyone's working at home, so everyone has. Uh, there's there's all kinds you of different. Working at home? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay. But, but everyone but, else does too. So there's lots lots of people who are trying to get their Citrix working on their home computers, and it doesn't work, <laughs> and you know, and then they don't yep. have audio or the webcam doesn't work. And, you know, it's, it's, they don't understand why you can't fix it in the next ten minutes. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and there's also you know like there's this company that has all this very complicated uh, proprietary software that you know I I, I have like uh, I'm running like five virtual machines at the same time where I log in <laughs> and log out and and you know it, it's just you gotta you gotta be on the whole time it's uh, it's pretty yeah. intense so at the end what of the kind week, of computer do you work off of then? It's, you need a monster for that stuff. Uh, I got, uh, let's see, I got an i7-8700, like like an i7 from two generations ago. Uh, okay. I got 48 gigs I don't, of I don't RAM. Know what that is. Uh, you know, it, it's 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 <laughs> it, it's a fast one. It's it's pretty damn fast. It's not it's not it's not like the ridiculous Macintosh that's like 20 grand, but it's you know, it's. it's Are you into building computers yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I yeah, always done that, man. I always been a computer geek. I'm jealous of that. I'm super jealous. Really? I would love to build a computer just for gaming. Like I don't want to edit on it or anything. I just want to build it for gaming. Go hundred percent, spare no expense. Well, just see what I can come up with. Well, you, I mean, it's easy to spend a lot of money, you know. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I have the money, but it's fine. I'll spend it on dumb shit. <laughs> well, the new uh, PlayStation and Xbox that those that's coming out soon, those things are legitimately fast. Like they, they I get pretty so. darn close to like the the highest, like the high end gaming PCs. You know, I reserved one day one. The Which day one? it was announced, I reserved the PlayStation Five. Are you um, with PlayStation, not Xbox? Of course, I'm a Sony man. <laughs> oh yeah, of course, yeah. Well, Never thought- abandon the family. <laughs> Well, no, I, mean, I used to be Xbox, but the the exclusives on PlayStation are just more my style. You got Forza on Xbox, though. That's like the ultimate racing game. You got you Gran mean, Turismo on PlayStation. Yeah. Get your shit together. <laughs> Gran Turismo, greater than Forza, always. Oh, I, I disagree with that. but <laughs> The new one looks good. The 917 is in the new one. I'm excited to race with that car. It, it all looks amazing. That's uh... Yeah. Yeah, it does. And, and I'll feel like, who's going to tell? <laughs> yeah. It's just that's... the cars that they have is... Yeah, you, you just choose it based on like the car, the automotive partnerships they have. Right, right. That's it. And uh, I think Porsche is pretty tight with uh, Gran Turismo, the new one. So I'm sold. Well, from from what I've seen so far, it both it both looks really good. So I don't think you can go wrong. But with the gaming PCs, man, if you want something like that, you can also just get an uh, Alienware. You know, just yeah, to, that's the lazy way. Yeah, but you know they're and they're expensive, but they're you know they're good. <laughs> I want to build it. I want my hands to do something. I want to be in charge of it. I want to say that, that thing. Hard, I made honestly. that thing. It's not that huh? hard, you know. If it, it's it basically everything fits pretty much one way in, and and you know if if something doesn't fit you, you shouldn't. The one thing you shouldn't do is try to force things in there because <laughs> then you're going to break things. <laughs> but <laughs> that's my problem. <laughs> I don't have the patience. You know Henry Cavill, the actor? Uh, no. He's the super jack actor, jacked actor who played uh, Superman. Okay. Yeah, I've been out uh, of the movies since for, for like the last decade or so, man. 
Uh, you might recognize him when you see him. He was in The Witcher, the TV show series. TV show series? The series on Netflix. Okay. Yeah. Um, he, does, he builds gaming computers as well. Okay. He did it on a stream once or like filmed himself building a computer. And he's like, like that dude is jacked. And I imagine if he's the one who's going to force shit into place, it's going to be him. <laughs> so if he can build a computer, then I have no excuse not to. Well, <laughs> what I like about building it yourself is you can just uh, customize it all the way. And you can bring parts from your previous build too, you know. So yeah. it it's sort of always, you know, I'm this is the third computer I built now, but I've brought like a couple of hard disks from the previous one. I have a really nice sound card in there and you know, I added an nice. extra bunch of USB ports to it and you can really just to... make it your own, you know? That that's kinda cool. I also wanted to be like crazy colors. <laughs> oh, you want to put the LEDs in there with the window yeah. and shit. I want to decorate it. <laughs> I want it to look cool. That's all I want. I just want it to look cool. <laughs> oh, you got and cases I want it to run out there. Like, huh? Oh, you got some cases out there that are really, really crazy. Can you redo cases on a MacBook? Mm, like without killing the warranty? No, no. No, the Mac stuff is like like the way you buy it, that's the way it is. and that, oh, that's I it. want my MacBook to look cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can put stickers on it. You know, a lot of people do that. I'm not like a 12-year-old little girl. Come on. <laughs> I want it to glow different colors. I want the keys to light up. <laughs> well, a lot of people... Um, let's see. Let me let me look up some crazy computer cases. I've, I've seen so many. I've seen people like build it into the desk. Yes. And stuff. They're like, you have plexiglass on top of the desk and you can see all the components straight through it. I want like that level of crazy... I want, like, the legs of the desk to store the water to cool it and stuff. I want it to be, like, really weird. Yeah, the water cooling weird stuff. Let's see if I, I don't can... know. I've seen people, like, mount it on the wall in, like, separate components. Yes. <laughs> That's crazy. That's sick. I want that. Let's see. Here we go. Here, look at these things, man. That's a Batmobile. That dude just straight up turned a Batmobile into a computer. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Got the DVD tray in there. Yeah, I want that. <laughs> How dope is that? That's the raddest. I don't even know. That's like some Tomb Raider shit. Yeah. R2 that's P2. rad. I'm so inspired to build it. That looks... Is that just an Xbox? They just stuck into an R2-D2. <laughs> <laughs> Here's you got your USBs. Wow. There's your CD drive. Cool. Why not? Yeah, people go nuts, man. But that's, that stuff's that, awesome. That's a funny thing. Like, at... In IT companies, people are way into that stuff too, you know. Damn, look at that thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mech. That's rad. They just took a mech and built it. That, okay. It's a toaster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, there's a V8. There's a V8 computer where the blower is the disk drive. Let's see. Where, just where two to that? the left of the mech. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's badass I want to okay that's it I want that <laughs> that's an LS that's an LS engine block slash computer that's probably a real block too so that's a computer that weighs a couple hundred <laughs> pounds you know <laughs> <laughs> they just stripped it out of their Corvette in the driveway there it is look at that that's cool <laughs> see I want that that I feel like that has my personality all over it it's a hard Davidson motor it looks like where people have done this. The water this cooling. Is sick. I want the pistons. <laughs> I want the pistons to send the water through the computer. <laughs> That'd be cool. So they actually move, and you get like pumped. It'd be so loud, but it'd be awesome. <laughs> the drum kit with a computer in it. I'm so <laughs> jealous. That's just a bottle of alcohol. A bottle of booze with a computer in it. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm so jealous of this. Yeah. Yeah, okay, people, I'm going to people go crazy with that, man. Wally. <laughs> I feel like people make them... That's a fucking beaver. That's a beaver computer, dude. That's a real beaver that they... <laughs> that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. I bet that computer overheats constantly. But someone, that, that might be the coolest computer I've ever seen. Someone that's shot it. a beaver and put a computer in it. That's incredible. I'm into it. <laughs> I'm into it. They shot a beaver. They hollowed it out and stuck a computer in there. It's 
fucking rat. Oh, look at that chair. <laughs> oh, yeah. I want one of those. Oh, with the screen on it. Yeah, I just want to like lock myself into a different world and never come out. <laughs> yeah, the VR stuff is coming out soon. That that that'll allow you to do it. Actually, I'm in. Let's go. Let's go. I'll give up photography for that. <laughs> I can just go live in a virtual world. It's hardcore escapism. I'm in. I mean, I'm right in. now, I'm with you, man. Fuck. With with this, this real life shit, shit, I'm over it. <laughs> <laughs> just drive Porsches all day in VR. Man. Well, I mean, with the way graphics are going, it, it'll be, you know, I think, I think we'll reach the point where where it looks as good as just real, you know. I hope so. Especially We're pretty when, close. I, there's a lot of shit. Like I have an OLED TV now. Oh yeah. And That's just amazing. OLED, like turning off the black pixels, makes life so much more interesting through a TV screen. Yeah. It's so much nicer. I got an old plasma, so it's it's not quite as good as OLED, but it's it's definitely better than the LCDs out there. Yeah. But every time I see those OLEDs in stores, I'm like, man, that's pretty. Dude, it is. It is. It changes the way you watch TV. The only thing is, like, I rarely ever watch 4K HDR videos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never using the TV for what it's meant to be using. Yeah, but even full HD looks great on it. You know, it's it's like the colors oh, yeah. and the, and the the black levels. It just looks tremendous it's worth it and it's not that expensive anymore no. now that technology is so common totally worth getting yeah. if if you're into tvs and video gaming and whatnot if you have a playstation you're letting yourself down by not having a good enough tv <laughs> i know it might sound a little bit pretentious but i fully believe that <laughs> you ever look uh, at your photos on that screen because it's probably better than the one on your computer right no, the computer. So the screen I have, I'm super happy with. Um, is it like a MacBook or? So I, I use the MacBook and then I hook it up when I'm editing to a 27 inch LG Ultrafine 5K screen. 5K. Um, yeah, it's a monster. Wow. So uh, the screen was made for MacBook, like this generation of MacBooks. Okay. Um, which means there's no on button or any settings on the screen. You plug it into the computer and it works. You don't have to calibrate or anything. It's just it's already matching from that. That's really cool. It's nice. I'm looking it's at nice. one I of really, those, really like. I'm looking at one of those uh, ISO screens, but those things are so damn expensive, man. Dude, have you seen the like the monster one that like wraps around your face? How do I even describe that? It's like forty some inches and it like wraps around your face. <laughs> you can fit like three normal screens on it. What does that thing Shoot. cost, man? It's like ten thousand euros or something, or yeah, it's totally worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Is it? If ISO I had that, or? I would just play like Flight Simulator all day on that. <laughs> I forget what that's called, but I'm sure you'd be able to find it pretty easily. It's got like a white back with this blue light on the back that looks super futuristic. It's a monster. See, I see these ultra wide screens that are. Let's see. I think it would change the way you live. <laughs> I think that would leak out into reality and you would start looking at the world differently. Like those things. Yeah, that's not it. I think it might be the top one of the guy. Yeah, it might be that one. Is those it? are those know. are not that crazy expensive. They're, well, I mean, it's like no, it's eight, nine hundred bucks. Who makes it? I forget. But yeah, it's it's one of those. That's just like, it's long enough that it needs two full rooms to itself. <laughs> <laughs> it's super cool I love that stuff man There's the, it, it, yeah I wish I could remember what brand it was but it just came out recently and everybody was hyped up about it at least in the gaming world probably really crazy for uh, simulators yeah I'm looking at uh, let's see um, what's the name of it ISO color color edge oh, and like the, an editing screen yeah, and then the twenty-seven inch one. Yep. I think I think this one is like That'd fifth. Be fun. Yeah, I mean it's expensive, but yeah, they are. They're typically worth it. Yeah. Unfortunately. It there, you know, if you if you look at those in real life and you see it next to a, like a regular screen, there is a big mm -hmm. big difference, you know. Yeah, I, I think the value in those is that you can get it to look exactly like your photo would look in print. Yes. 
in, in which case you have true accuracy, which would be nice, but I, I never print my photos. So as long as people are looking at my photos on like iPhones or Apple screens or whatever, I'm, I'm <clears> happy sticking with Apple. But Apple screens are beautiful too. That new screen that uh, Apple put out uh, last year or two years ago, that thing yeah, is that crazy. More than my house. Yeah. <laughs> The stand that cost a thousand dollars. Yeah, it's insane, and they get away with it, and people are happy to pay that for for a stand, you know. Yeah, yeah. These companies, I mean, nobody private's paying for that, but the companies who just don't care, yeah. and they're like, I don't know, if you edit for like a massive company in LA or something, you can just put whatever you want on the purchase sheet for next year's equipment. Yeah, yeah. I'll never question it. Less taxes to pay. It's yeah, investment, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Then I get it. Otherwise, you got to be a little smarter than that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I I did switch to iPhone this year, though. Did you? Yeah, yeah, for the first time after using Android forever. So. Okay, what do you think? I like it, man. I like it. I'd, stuck? Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely very happy. It's. Uh, I was just getting so frustrated with my previous phones. They were always just slow and kind of crashing and kind of glitching and stuff. And even, yep. you know, I didn't get the very expensive ones, but I got, you know, still a couple hundred bucks for a phone, you know, like like yeah, yeah. five, six hundred bucks for a phone. And then after after like a year or two, it starts slowing down and it gets annoying. So I just got How tired of it. How crazy is it that people still complain about the price of phones? Yeah. How? I don't understand how iPhone or Apple can come out with a phone that's like 1,200 euros or whatever it is. I, I know what it is in Korea. I don't know what it is in euros, but something like that. Yeah. And everybody immediately goes out and starts complaining that's so expensive. You spend so many hours every day looking at that thing. That is the most important item you own. And you're complaining about it being, what, cheaper than your TV was. Right. <laughs> like, right. You're going to get a new TV in two or three years as well. Yet you're willing to pay the same amount of money to look at your screen in your living room that you are to the screen that you hold all the time, all day. That blows my mind. I don't know why I'm so worked up about that. <laughs> I just have been. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's still it's still quite a bit of money, you know. Especially, I think the the yeah. thing is people compare them to what else is out there, and you know, if you're not like a serious power user, you can buy a decent phone for like three, four hundred bucks, and yeah. And, and you know, if and if you look at that, like, hey, I can call with it, I can take pictures of it. Why people who buy a phone that's like thirteen hundred bucks are crazy? And yeah, you but know, people still own like phones and MacBooks, and then they complain that their phone is like a quarter of the price of the MacBook. That's like, a good you point. use your phone way more often than that MacBook. It's way more important to you. Yeah. Well, How do you so complain? That's so weird. Oh, well, like, the phone should be like two thousand euros at least. <laughs> that should be the starting price of a phone. Then maybe you wouldn't buy one every year as well. Maybe we'd limit how much we buy phones. That's not a bad idea, actually. Why not? It only seems fair. Yeah, I always so use much. I always use my phones until they just die, you know. So, yeah. So I hope this I paid, one will last a long time. I think I paid as much for this like recording setup as a new iPhone would cost. Yeah. And I mean, how often do I use this recording setup? Like rarely. That's so to pay point. that much and still be okay with paying that much money for this and then pay however much for my new phone and complain, <laughs> that's insane. What are you rocking right now? Are you... Uh... Uh, Sony. Always. Sony. Oh, of course. <laughs> yep. The Xperia 1 2, which is admittedly a very stupid name, but I'm having a lot of fun with the phone. What's the idea behind the 1 2 name? I don't know. I, I guess they wanted to establish that it was the flagship phone and called it the one, but the other phone is called the five. Uh, okay. I don't get it. I guess it makes sense to them, but to consumers, it doesn't make any sense. Is it like um, five times better or five times less good than the <laughs> one? Or I don't know, but the camera <laughs> on this phone is phenomenal. There's three different cameras, uh, 70 millimeter, 24 millimeter, and a uh, 16, I think. Yeah, that's cool. I've been playing with it. It's it's amazing. It has like eye tracking, autofocus for animals and humans. No like, shit. It's super cool. They're putting their uh, uh, mirrorless technology in, in their phones. They are. And 
just to make sure we understand it, there's a little Zeiss logo on the lens. So you got Zeiss glass in there too. Yep. That's cool. I'm okay with that. I trust them. And yet you don't see them that much, you know? They're not popular, they're not very mainstream, you know? It's mostly no, Samsung and iPhones and, you know, LG. I wonder why. Why are people so picky? I don't get it. I mean, it's maybe it's not pickiness. It's just, like, for example, the screen on this phone is 21 by 9 ratio, and it's 4K. This is a 4K OLED screen. All right, like, that's this impressive. screen is... the. The screen is the same resolution as my 55-inch TV. How can you, how can you ignore that? That's amazing. That is, uh, yeah. And iPhones don't even have that. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. How how it's big crazy. is that screen? This one? Yeah. Uh, Dimensions-wise, I don't know. Okay. Almost as tall as my face. It's a lot of pixels in in a tiny uh, screen, man. Yeah, it's very pixel dense. It's super nice, and the photos look really good on it. Um, video is amazing on it because it has like this cinema feature, where it has like a very flat color uh, color profile, so you can film um, like as you would on a normal camera, like a DSLR or something. Oh yeah, super useful if you're into filming and making like little videos and just having the convenience of a phone to do it. It's unstoppable. This this phone, I love it. Well, that's cool, man. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. So yeah. nerdy talk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I I enjoy it, man. It's uh, it's it's good shit. It's, uh, <laughs> that's good. Let's hope somebody listening to this enjoys it too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a we got a wide variety of listeners to this uh, podcast. That's good. What's the majority? What what are these people? What are, I say these people. Who are they? Who are your listeners? Most of them uh, live in the States, actually. And oh, yeah. Quite a big uh, amount in the UK and a little bit in Australia, too. So, uh, okay. So, I'm, so anywhere but home. Yeah, pretty much. But probably because <laughs> it's in English, you know. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's good. That's awesome. So, yeah. And, and um, I think what what the reason for that is because I always write pretty extensive show notes. And it gets yep. picked up by Google, so people just land on the website. And okay. on YouTube, I don't have um, I I don't have very many views on on the I, I try everything on YouTube too, but there's little views there, and most of it comes through podcast apps, you know. So okay, nice. So yeah, I guess That's a good most place to be. That I'm sorry. That's a good place to be. Yeah, yeah, you know. So it's yeah, it's been fun, man. I've done. Uh, Done. Let's see. This will be episode number thirty-one or thirty-two or so. So fantastic. Been busy. Yeah, you were last time we talked. You were talking about uh, starting a podcast too, man. I was. Uh, I was. <laughs> yeah. Um. I, I've talked about starting so many things in the last year. It's been quite a crazy addiction of mine to start projects. Um. There aren't so many that I've followed through with mostly because every time I start a new project, I tend to realize that I should just be focusing on one thing at a time because right. everything gets muddled. I, I just start too many gears turning and they start fighting each other. So for me to start a podcast studio right now is a bit tough. Um, before Corona, I would have happily done it. Like, right before Corona, I was looking at like buying a car, like, um, an old Porsche that I could flip for money. Of course. Getting into car, yeah. Getting into car flipping. Um, I was looking at getting an office space. I could have like a full time podcast studio in and a workspace, um, so on and so forth. There was a lot of stuff on my list to do, and then just poof, 2020 happened. It's been a crazy year, <laughs> so, man. It's been a crazy yeah, year. Yeah, so it kind of like put things into perspective, and I had to sort of sit back and be like, okay, let me focus on one thing at a time. And that one thing was just building on my car photography, teaching myself to do that better. Um, like right now, I'm building a pretty good setup for car photography in terms of lights. Um, so hopefully that'll be done soon and I'll have a lot of new car stuff just coming constantly. That's cool. And then there's adventure stuff every now and then. Just yeah, what's, and hike. 
What's been your latest adventure, man? Because uh, a couple of weeks ago, we we uh, you said like, yeah, man, let's, I'm I'm going out this weekend. I'm going uh, on an adventure somewhere. Where did she go? Yeah, I went up. Uh, I went north. I, I flew up north to a place called Rago. It's Norway's newest national park, I think. Still, Rago. Um, it's pretty unknown. If you search it, it's R A G O. Pretty simple. Okay. Um, most people, when they fly into Bolde, the town, they take the ferry out to uh, Lofoten. And instead of going to Lofoten, if you go the other direction, you find Rago. And it's insane. It's so pretty. The main valley is like 200 meters deep. So that waterfall is about 220 meters tall. That looks amazing. Yeah, there's this river that goes through the whole valley. Super windy, really smooth and quiet. Um, I can send you some of the photos so you can share it with the podcast. Yeah, that'll um, be cool, man. Some really cool stuff up there. We got some really moody weather. That is not Rago. That is Troll Seeking. Okay. It's a cool place. To... <laughs> Google but that is. Um, <laughs> how dare they? Um, it, it takes a little bit of hiking, but there aren't too many people, so you're usually promised a pretty quiet experience, which is really nice. <clears throat> You get all these bridges over the river that are super pretty and calm. Man, it looks amazing. I do like that place. So yeah, oh, that's a new view. That's from the complete other side. I've never been over there. That's cool. I'm into it. <laughs> that's funny. I haven't seen any of my photos come up yet because I have a ton that have been shared. This <laughs> help. There we go. That helps. Yeah. None from Rago. That's funny. A lot of my photos, but none from Rago. Are they on your? Uh, are there any photos from Rago on your website? Maybe in the adventure part or in the work part, labeled health sports. That's a good question. My Instagram page comes up on Google before my website. Interesting. So if you go to the tent one up there at the top row. No, that's Lofoten. Yeah, it's also pretty, though. That is also pretty. <laughs> yeah, we went there hoping for a uh, midnight sun, and we almost had it. That guy doesn't you look like he's having a good time, though. He's like, yeah. ah. <laughs> Focused. <laughs> Norwegian. He's a Viking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the closest. That picture there is the closest we got to the midnight sun. Um Super chill, super relaxed, really cool vibes. We were a pretty good p group of people. I think we were like six or seven people. We were all staying in like different tents. It was a really fun experience. So midnight sun, does that mean like special kind of light or something? Or Midnight sun is where it doesn't go away. It's up at midnight. Um, mm -hmm. And you get an extremely long sunset. Okay. You get a sunset that lasts for hours. Um mm -hmm. Which is pretty mind blowing. It just sort of hovers from maybe like ten, ten thirty to like one or one thirty in the morning. It just hovers right across the border okay. at the horizon. Um, so that was a pretty good time. I went up to Lofoten again this year with a car company, uh, Polestar. But it's and a new I Volvo, right? It. Yeah, partly owned by Volvo. Um, and I went up with my girlfriend a few days earlier so we could go adventure and just to see it. She'd never seen it before. It was super pretty. Lofoten never disappoints, man. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a luxury. There's Rago. Yeah. I forgot I had that up there. That was a long time ago. I think that was four years ago, three years ago. That's nice. It's, it's pretty wild up there. It's something else. I always like that, like, lights. A, like a brightly colored tent in the middle of like a green landscape, but it'll, that always is good for a photo. Oh yeah, yeah. This this <clears> was <throat> on a a trip with a company called Hell Sports. They make tents and sleeping bags. Nice. Uh, and we were shooting for them, and this was like my first real big tent adventure. We went for like five nights, and we never saw one cloud the whole time. It That's was crazy. Cool. We went in September and saw Northern Lights. That was nuts. So it's super early for Northern Lights, and you still get, like, some warm nights. It's not super cold. It was just really, really nice. What's the temperature? 
Um, during the day, probably like 15 degrees ish, but during the nights, probably closer to like five. That's not so bad. No, it's not. It's not terrible. I mean, you, as long as you have the right sleeping bag, you're you're fine. There's uh, no such thing as bad weather; just bad clothing. Right. <laughs> it's a Norwegian saying. Do you get a Do you get a lot of rain up there, or is it mostly just really cold if the weather gets rough? Man, that normally we got rained crazy. out. We got rained out this year. Um, Raga is pretty close to the coast. So the weather is a little bit uncertain, but it's further in than like Lofoten and stuff. So you don't have like the typical West Coast weather. But oh, okay, Rago. Still kind. Of- this is what I find when I search for Rago. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's apparently it's, underwear. Uh, yeah. Well. Yep. Well, that looks about it. Valleys and peaks galore. <laughs> I'm cool with that too. <laughs> <laughs> Google okay. knows you too well. <laughs> yeah, there it is, all the way up north. Man. Very pretty place. Fun to take a little adventure on Google Earth up there, do some street view stuff. I've had uh, tons of fun with that. Yeah, we just went up, rented a car from Naba Beal. Naba was like a... Like a what do you call that? Like a rent a car thing where you go privately to other people. Okay. And went in there and just looked around. Like Airbnb for cars. Basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah. You just borrow other people's cars. The hike is not too bad. It's about five and a half kilometers with five hundred vertical. Man, Google does know me. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> just babes and beaches. Yeah, exactly. That's not at all the park. It's not even close. I guess some Instagram chick sneaked a photo of her in, in there too, you know. <laughs> Just trying to mooch off the success of Raga. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's cool. It's one of those places that it feels like you're cheating when you're taking photos. Man, that's so pretty. Does all the hard work for you. How often do you go on these uh, outdoors adventures? Um, I try to go often enough to keep myself busy. Um, like every now and then you just get sick of the grind. Yeah. City life. And then it's nice just to like stop returning calls and just book a trip and go somewhere. Right. Like, uh, in April I did one as well. Um, I went to, uh, maybe Norway's biggest and most popular national landmark, which is called Prekestilen. Um, Pulpit Rock. You've probably seen photos of it. Have you seen um, the new Mission Impossible? Which one is that? Where, uh, where Tom Cruise is in like a helicopter crash with Henry Cavill, and they're fighting on the edge of this cliff, like hanging off of it. No, that yes. doesn't sound familiar. I'm I'm bad with movies, man. You like are I'm, really bad with movies. I am. Like the, <laughs> uh, you know, which movies I lately watch a lot? Old John oh. Candy movies, man. <laughs> Really? John yeah, Candy? Dude. John, wow. yeah. And, uh, yeah. Who doesn't have a soft spot for John Candy? In the last couple of weeks, uh, my wife and I, we've been watching um, the Naked Gun trilogy over a couple of weeks. Those are good movies, <laughs> though. Fucking great, man. Those are good movies. Yeah. I watched Airplane recently. Oh, that one's classic. That's a great movie. <laughs> yeah. But, you it's know, so there's, funny. there's so many good jokes in there that you couldn't make anymore today, man. It's uh, Yeah, and... Like the way those movies were structured was that like every shot had a joke in it. Yeah, and it's There's so no shot that isn't funny in that movie. And it's so obviously I don't think you filmed can do in the studio now. too, you know. Yeah, and the visual I don't effects. Think you can do that now. Well, I mean, you, if it's as funny, you probably can, you know. I don't know. I just don't think people have that sense of humor anymore. I don't think it's built into us. You think I don't so? think people would notice everything. Yeah, maybe. There's so many little things like. That joke in Airplane where the guy is stuck in the taxi until the end of the movie. Like, I don't know if that's funny anymore. <laughs> I mean, that is funny, man. <laughs> it's the start of the movie and it's the end of the movie. He's just stuck in the taxi the whole movie waiting for the taxi driver to come back. Yeah, but it's so stupid that it, that it I mean, if that doesn't make you laugh, man. I, <laughs> that's the point. I think movies need to be smarter now. Yeah, does it really? I, I mean, 
Okay. I think the last stupid funny movie was Anchorman. I think that was the mm. end of it. I don't think they've made a good funny stupid movie since then. What about? I mean, Will uh, Ferrell's made a lot of stupid movies, but they haven't been funny. Napoleon Dynamite. That one was pretty good. That was pretty good, but I don't think that was in the same vein. I think Napoleon Dynamite was more like situational, whereas like Anchorman and movies like Top Gun or not Top Gun, but uh, Lethal. No, Naked Gun, sorry. Yeah. I'm mixing all kinds of genres now. Um, I think those were funny just because they had jokes for the sake of jokes. There was no narrative. No. They were just there because they were funny. Well, that was, that, but that's what make it, makes it so brilliant, I think, man. There's no no political messages. There's no there's no nothing, man. It's just stupid and funny, man. <laughs> I agree, and I wish they did that still. I don't think that sells anymore. I don't think it ever sold. Like Hot Shots, Hot Shots Part 2, that kind of stuff. I don't think you could release that now. I don't think it'd be funny anymore. <laughs> I would think it's funny. You and I would, but I think everybody who's like waiting for the next Marvel movie, I don't think they're going to come out of the movie theater and be like, you know what? That was worth my money. <laughs> Aren't people getting tired of those superhero movies now? I mean, they've been making so oh, many dude. of them, man. People love that shit. Yeah. People are so into that. I... I, I like the it. first couple of X Men movies, but then you know I, I'm just really, like that's your thing. Well, but I I got I mean last time I watched the super I saw the um, what's the one with the weird guy with the red suit who also makes jokes all the time. <laughs> the, yeah, like Shazam. No, it was like death. <laughs> oh, Deadpool. Death, death, Deadpool. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the last that's one a funny I saw. Movie. That was that was pretty good. Yeah. First funny. one was funny. Second one, I felt like maybe they milked that joke a little too hard, but okay, I like that. The self-aware superhero, I think that's funny. Yeah, but the Batman, yeah, you know, like the the three the Batman trilogy that was pretty dark, you know, with the Joker, with the guy that uh, ended dark up killing Knight himself. Trilogy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that that one, those were great. But after that, I kind of lost interest. You know, it's just yeah, yeah, I get that. I I feel like you can't just jump into Avengers now. Like if you weren't into adventures or adventures like the whole Marvel series from the beginning, it's not gonna be that fun anymore. How many There's movies in that series are there? Oh my god. Like thirty some now? I don't 30. know. Thirty. That's insane. There, there there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. Even just Avengers movies, there's like four or five big ones. Yeah. Crazy. Wow. But Ridiculous. even even Star Wars, you know, like after like the second new one, like The Last Jedi. That one was so yeah. terrible that I just don't give a shit about Star Wars anymore, man. <laughs> it was that bad to you? Yeah, it was just awful. Oh. It was like... You know uh, what's about to be... The new Star Wars is about to be Dune. Dune? Yeah, you know the book Dune? The um, Frank Herbert. Uh, yep. Yeah. They're, ma they're making a movie on the first one. Okay, but yeah. they already did that, right? In the 80s, I think? Yeah, but that was a shitty movie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't good. I mean, they already did superhero movies in like the 80s and 60s and 70s, but those weren't good either. Okay. But this one, the trailer just came out and it looks good. Okay. And I, I think like there's what, like 12 Dune novels or something? I think this is the new Star Wars. Okay. Well, the, oh, I mean, the, the purists say that only like the first two or three are really great. And then I think after the original writer died, a bunch of other people, and I think his kid wrote the rest of them, and they're kind of just, uh, oh, 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 where there are you? he is. There you are. We're back. Hey, I don't know what happened there. My Zoom just yeah. crashed all of a sudden. <laughs> you still recording? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still going. I am too. Good. Let's see, there we go. But yeah, you know, it's uh, I've. That that book's actually on my reading list. It's uh Oh you haven't read one. You haven't read it. No, no, but it's pretty high on my list. I'm I'm now working on uh nineteen eighty four. Yeah. Classic. I'm, uh, I'm going through the classics now that I should have read but haven't yet, so never ending. Yeah. yeah I read some. um on that same vein, I read Moby Dick. Um I did an audio book. I drove from Tromsø to Oslo. Tromsø is like Norway's most northern city. And Oslo is, I mean, in the south. It's like a 22-hour drive or something. Oh, my God. 
And I, from the moment I left Tromsø, I pressed play on that book, Moby Dick, and I finished by the time I got to Oslo in one scene <laughs> all the way through. You didn't, you that didn't was stop a monster for a break? Or, huh? You didn't stop for a break at all? I don't mean, I stopped to charge the car. It was an electric car, so I stopped to charge it and just sat in the car and listened to the book. Wow. Pulled the charger out, got back in, and drove. That's amazing. 20, <laughs> 22 hours straight, just listened to, <laughs> listen to that book. Was it good? I haven't yeah, read it either. was good. It was good, but it's, I mean, you got to be really interested in whales. <laughs> 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 There's a lot of uh, whale knowledge. I forget what he calls it. There's a name for it, but. There's a lot of uh, shared knowledge about whales. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So you, I thought it was fun. It's worth having read. It's just one of those. Yeah. Well, another one that I read recently, I read it before, but I reread it, was um, they made a movie out of it with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. I forgot. Oh, damn it. Oh, no. Ugh. What's the Old? name of it? No, it, it's like... Gatsby? Yeah, the Great Gatsby. Yeah. Yeah, great book. The the writing is so beautiful, man. Every sentence great is American just a novel. piece of art. It's uh, yeah, it's great. And of and course, the, there's the, the movie. The movie not so great. <laughs> no, I haven't seen the movie, so it has its moments. I mean, like Jay Z is in charge of music for that movie. <laughs> that's kind of weird. Yeah, it's a movie it does, that's it's... supposed to be in the 1920s, right? Yeah, they kind of missed on that when they have like. Big pimping as they're driving <laughs> through the city. <laughs> huh. Okay. I'm not so sure about that one. Well, they also did that with uh, Django Unchained. Yeah, like Kanye West's music in there. I think. At one yeah. Point. That was kind of weird. I get it. I guess it kind of suits the vibe, but if you're gonna make a period piece, you should stick to the period. Yeah. Agreed. At least try a little. Hmm. <laughs> Who cares? People with such short attention spans. They watch these movies and they hear Jay Z and they get excited. Yeah. Oh. Kanye or whatever. I wonder um, if what this is going to do to the movie industry too because, you know, people are not going to theaters anymore. and uh, mm -hmm. It's going to push it to at home. Like, yeah. all these, like, Netflix and stuff are probably, they're probably funding insane projects right now. Right. There's probably some stuff that they are putting money towards that we can't fathom. Um, right. Like Netflix and Disney has the new streaming service. I, I I wonder what kind of stuff like Disney Pixar is working on that's meant just for Disney Plus. Curious. Yeah. Well, they, didn't they recently bought like a whole bunch of franchises or some big studio or something? Yeah. They, oh, what did they buy most recently? I don't remember. It was something big, like some kind Marvel? of. Uh, yeah, it was it was something like that. It it was I'm, some I'm some sure. multi billion something. It was you know they <laughs> bought part of like. I mean, I'm, anything is just going to be a guess, but I I feel like I remember them buying part of Fox. Oh yeah. Um, and Marvel, and Lucas Films, so like, yeah, they're pretty stacked. Yeah, they bought Lucas. They bought the Star Wars rights a couple of years ago for what was it twenty billion or something insane or ten billion? I forget. It was. That's not enough. Nothing is enough. It was something crazy. It's, yeah. Uh, have That's you have you ever, have you ever seen that uh, that infographic uh, or that that like chart where you see like the the media companies that are out there? There's like three or four companies that own everything in media. No, but I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I can imagine it's Disney on top, Fox somewhere in the middle. Time well, Time Warner is probably in there. Let's and see. And Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a big, big thing too, man. Still is. Pokemon is massive. I never Pokemon's got into probably, it, man. I never got into there's there's a lot of big things that I just didn't care about, man. It's uh <laughs> You're too busy being productive. Yeah. The rest of us are wasting time and money on cards. <laughs> well maybe. <laughs> it, yeah, that Pokemon Go thing, I got really into that. I love that. I had a lot of fun. I met yeah. so many random new people. It was so cool. Such a fun experience. 
You had people walking off cliffs and shit because they were looking at their phone and, and <laughs> thinking they'd find a Pokemon <laughs> somewhere. And also, I have a feeling none of that is true. <laughs> well, there that was sounds one like such an urban rumor. But there was one thing that was like a real thing. There was apparently some kind of a rare Pokemon somewhere in like some Holocaust memorial or something, and kids kept showing <laughs> up to to catch, <laughs> to catch a Pokemon there. <laughs> but, uh, and then you know, yeah, why it, not? They need the visitors. Be, uh, <laughs> lean on that. I mean, yeah. Is it insensitive? I don't know. It has nothing to do with it. It's not like counter Jewish yeah, or or graveyards, you know, you know, stuff like that and private properties oh. and, and there's yeah. Why yeah. Not? <laughs> if I had a lawn and I had a rare Pokemon on my lawn, I would like make iced tea for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Serve beers. Come hang out. It'd be awesome. Let's go catch this Pokemon together. Let's see. Yeah, I think I found it. Here we go. There we go. You got I'm curious. You see the screen? Uh, not yet. Here we go. And it's nope. There. It's the wrong yeah, one. There it is. Damn, that's my desktop. I think. Nice green. Yeah, thank you. That's <laughs> a picture I took in Australia. Here we it's go. Beautiful. Ah, uh, here we go. These six companies: General Electric. Yeah, they own Comcast, NBC, Universal Pictures. These they act like Viacom is important. <laughs> <laughs> MTV, BET. CMT. Nobody watches that shit. Nobody cares. Well, Paramount, Paramount I Pictures guess. is pretty big. Yeah, that's pretty big. News Corp. News Corp, Disney, Time Warner. I was pretty correct on. They act like CBS owning Jeopardy is on par with Disney owning ESPN. I think Jeopardy <laughs> is pretty big, though. I mean, that show's been around forever, right? It's not as big as Marvel. Come on. Yeah, and I think this infographic is also pretty old, but... Oh, look at Finland. I feel so bad for them. That's 2010. Oh, yeah, that's pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Total yeah, 2010 yeah. revenue for the big six companies was $275.9 billion. That's $36 billion more than Finland's GDP. Why do they throw Finland on the bus like that? <laughs> I don't know. What did Finland do to you? Leave them alone. I think, you know, that's it's still like a nice big uh, or a nice prosperous western country you know yeah also what is this like picture of the san francisco where half of the town is underwater let's see that's (laughs) one uh, 232 media executive controlled information diet of 277 million americans that's one media executive to 850,000 subscribers an audience the size of san francisco uh, it looks like the city's underwater, but I think it's like some. Uh, it's supposed to be a perspective where you kind of look oh, no, down I've, the street. I've or been something. to San Francisco. It's underwater. Oh, okay. You got to swim from place to place. That's just how it <laughs> works over there. Well, <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm just talking shit, and this is a terrible infographic. But who knows? They don't let you in until you swim. <laughs> <laughs> That's their motto: no swim, no in. <laughs> no, but it's crazy. It's crazy. I, especially like News Corp back in the day was, that was the standard. That's the one that everybody referenced. And like, you know, Rupert Murdoch owns everything you watch until Disney showed up and just fucking bought everything. Yeah. Including part of News Corp. Like Disney bought so much of Fox recently. Yeah, it's crazy. Unless I'm talking out of my ass. No, I think you're right. That's it's nuts. Uh, yeah. Things have gone in a weird direction. <laughs> well, same with the social media companies. They're so big and they're so powerful, man. Yeah, Facebook owns it all. Yeah, they can. They can kind of, you know, uh, they just do whatever they want. Uh, mm-hmm. I think they're so can big. I at- air, can I air a grievance against Facebook photography groups? Sure. Uh, this if you can say everything on this podcast. Okay, I, I want to talk directly to those people for a sec. Okay. They're the worst fucking people on the face of the planet. <laughs> they are horrible people. Any Facebook photography group is just full of terrible, <laughs> terrible people with Why? horrible. That if if you shoot a photo, I don't care how good of a photographer you are, shoot a photo you're proud of, like edit it however you're super proud of, export it. Post it on one of these groups, any of the groups, 
and just wait for the feedback. <laughs> you will immediately get criticism. Immediately. Somebody will hate, like, if it's the coolest portrait in the world, somebody will hate the way the light bounces off their eyelashes and they'll call you out on it. They're so fucking picky. They're the worst people in the world. You don't even have to ask for it. You don't have to ask for creative criticism or constructive criticism and people will give it to you like on whatever. And it's people who are totally unqualified, just like dumb. Just, I, I, I was a part of, I'm a part of the Sony alpha photographer page. Right. A lot of good people. A lot of people who just want to see cool pictures, share and like clap for each other and hype each other shit up and be like, Hey man, you're going in a cool direction. I love what you're doing. And then somebody posts a picture where maybe they smooth the skin out on a model like a little bit much. Maybe it's a little bit too smooth. Looks like a toy. Whatever. They're learning. That's how you learn. You go overboard and then you dial it back. And then somebody will come in and be like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> You're just sharing this because there's boobs and nobody's liking this because it's a good picture. <laughs> it's funny because somebody did that. And right after that comment, the photographer, Ray K., who is, um, he's a Norwegian who works in Hollywood. He's a portrait photographer and he's worked with like any of the biggest luxury brands in the world he's worked with. He's unstoppable. And he commented on that comment saying, well, something to the effect of like, well, thank God style is everything. Like, <laughs> thank God there are no rules in photography. And the dude commented back without doing any research as to who Ray K was which is like, yeah, no, you're totally wrong. He didn't follow the rule of thirds at all. It's so stupid. Oh, my God. I just wanted to be like, you know who you're talking to? Like, that's one of the greatest commercial portrait photographers working at the moment. That dude is amazing, and you're calling him out. It's insane. It, so any photography-based Facebook group or page or whatever, you're terrible people. All of you. <laughs> well. Oh, I mean, a lot of social media is very negative. There's, there's just everyone's okay. fighting, everyone's talking shit, and then there's also people trolling, and I find those the, those are my favorites because the, they're actually funny usually, you know. But yeah, I guess trolling is one thing, but like when you can't tell if it's a joke or if it's just mean. Yeah. Like when somebody shares a photo and doesn't ask for feedback. Yeah. Don't give them the feedback. Just don't. Well, so she, yeah. What kind of weird insecurity is that based on that you feel like you have to tell somebody that their style is wrong and yours is correct? I, I know what you're <laughs> saying, though, man. I get, I'm, I'm also part of the Facebook group, and I'm going to sound like a huge dork now, too. Um, <laughs> I'm a, it, it's like the slow cooker Facebook group. I got a slow cooker. Oh. I love that thing, man. You can cool. make pulled pork in it. You can make pulled chicken in it. You can make amazing like if you uh you know if you if you cook like a big piece of meat with bone in it you just throw the bone in there with some uh with some salt and spices and let it let it boil for a night and you got the most amazing broth for like a soup or anything so i love that shit so i'm part of this group and people post like pictures of their recipes and shit and same what you say everyone just talks shit no one's like oh that's a cool Why? idea and there's like this this nice lady, you know, this this nice old lady who's you can tell by the way she writes and the way she puts up pictures. She's <laughs> in her sixties. She doesn't really, you know, she just figured out how Facebook works. You know, it's like oh, oh you know, I, I made this recipe and people are just like most people. Just the only comment that they leave is just f. You know, <laughs> it's just like, oh, no. like <laughs> she doesn't know what that means. This poor woman is an f. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> f. An F is, yeah, it's to like, explain it to your viewers, yeah, a F way to recognize the death of someone in on the internet. Yeah, exactly. It's a video game reference. Yeah, it's a, it's a reference to uh, like Call of Duty. There's a scene like press F to pay respect, and then then you pay respect in the, in the video game to like a fallen soldier friend, and uh, <laughs> you know. And <laughs> you do it in real life. That's so fucking mean. Is some woman. Who's sharing her recipe with a slow cooker <laughs> that she's <laughs> super proud of? But that, I think perfect. I think that shows you the general vibe of social media, man. It uh, it's pretty it's crazy, pretty shitty. <laughs> it's bad. Facebook is the worst, and Facebook fan groups are shitholes. Twitter is crazy <laughs> too, man. There's there's the worst, uh, and they're they're horrible people. 
I think <laughs> a lot of them are also just mentally not well. A lot of them, men. Like there's there's some. Yeah, I mean, that would explain a lot. I would hope so. There's some uh, people in there who just kind of get crazy. They 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 send like tweets for like twenty hours, and they yeah. they just tweet like a couple hundred times in a row. They just get on the rampage, you know. I'm it's, not on Twitter. Yeah, well, I I read it mostly, but it's a uh, it's a <laughs> shit like show. That's, that's uh, a bad one. Yeah, it it makes you lose faith in in a good <laughs> humanity, man. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the only place worse than Facebook fan groups. I think you might be right. <laughs> yeah. And fan groups. It's, it's a funny Joker name too, group. you know. Huh? It's it, it's funny that the name is like it's a fan group. So you're supposed to be fans of stuff and you're supposed to have a good time together because you got a common interest, but Yeah. It's just And a, then they just shit on each other. <laughs> <laughs> you ever got mean comments on your photos or I've had a few. Um How do you react to it? Ones, do you get the into it? The mean ones aren't the ones that I react. No, the mean ones I don't react to. I just whatever and move on. But the ones where they give you feedback on like how you can better the photo, like I'm not going to change it. <laughs> the worst ones, the worst ones, and these people mean well, and that's the worst part of it is that they think they're doing a good thing, but they're horrible people, genuinely. Straight up they, narcissism. Horrible people. Yes, they will download the photo, like the JPEG from the Facebook group. They will re-edit it the way they think it looks good and repost it and be like, I think you should have done it this way. (laughs) (laughs) Delete that shit right now. (laughs) uh, I didn't do it that way. That's very insulting. It's the worst. (laughs) It's the worst. Like, that is the worst kind of human. What? First of all, why do you think I'd care? (laughs) Second of all, your style sucks. It's terrible. It's just objectively bad, and it doesn't suit my photo, so stay away from it. And you added a JPEG because... It, it's you know it's not a you can't really do much with a jpeg once it's a jpeg you know it's nope all you can do is change the colors yeah that's it all you can do is fuck with the colors and they do <laughs> <laughs> and they fuck it up they'll like warm it up to the high heavens and add lens flares and shit <laughs> don't <laughs> lens flares. how dare you how dare you do that to my photo that hasn't that hasn't happened too much to me personally because I tend to share like more modest, like I just like a grenade. I just drop it in there and run and just get the <laughs> fuck out. Uh, but there are some people who like I feel so bad for them and they feel like they have to like justify themselves and like, well, I did it this way because I want this and this and this. Like you don't need to, man. You're arguing with a wall. <laughs> yeah, feel so bad for them, especially that guy who called out Ray K. <laughs> Whoever you are, Ray K is better than you. <laughs> Just shut the fuck up and take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's if you if you're going somewhere in life, that's not how you spend your time. No, you're not making friends. <laughs> no. <laughs> if you want to make friends with photographers and get better and get better known in the industry, you don't do it by changing other people's photos and insisting <laughs> that they change it. That's horrible. <laughs> Imagine going to an art gallery and pointing at things, being like, well, I would have done this in editing. Like, right. Nobody gives a fuck. Yeah, just walk, walk into an art gallery with a with a bucket and a paintbrush, you know? <laughs> Take a picture of it, print it out at home, paint it yourself, and then put it back on the wall next to the original <laughs> of the gallery. <laughs> no, who cares? <laughs> Take that shit off. <laughs> yeah, man. That's, yeah, I, uh, I, I, that's my grievance. I wonder what social media is going to be in 10 years or so. It's, uh, oh man! <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's just political ads. Yeah, that's I mean, good. but that's that's what it already is, you know. Yeah, it's just gonna go further that direction. Nobody's gonna be on it. It's gonna be political ads that are running to nobody. It's yeah. gonna be like a desert tumbleweed. Until something else come like. along, man. I remember how popular MySpace was and how fast that was gone. You know? Yep. Same thing might yeah, happen. I hope the same. As soon as Tom left. Yeah, Tom's the man. Tom got the fuck out. He created it, sold it for like half a billion dollars, bought a bunch of camera equipment, rented some helicopters, and just started shooting. And now he's a fu- he's a photographer. That's badass. He's badass. He's a really good photographer too. I like his stuff. I like his mentality. What's his name? Tom. That's all I know. Okay. <laughs> My space, Tom. <laughs> he can do whatever the hell he wants, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. He killed it. He. Made his money, got out, and chased the passion. Good for that, him. That's a dream. 
I'm, I'm guessing MySpace was his passion and then realized he was into visuals, started mm-hmm. taking pictures. I wonder yeah. if he still is. I hope so. He was really good. Uh, one thing that was interesting, I forget who made that point, was that uh, like social media is, is kind of boring and generic because like every Facebook page, every Twitter page looks the same and because it's yep. in the same format. And at least in MySpace, you could make your own background and most of those MySpace pages looked absolutely terrible, but they mm-hmm. were definitely unique and personal to that person. So you were... Yeah. You kind of got to peek into someone's personality through, you know, their page, and I guess. And you got to learn a little bit about coding and what it goes into, like making a website. Yeah. If you really wanted a good looking page, you would like copy paste code into MySpace's whatever creator. Yeah. And that was that was fun. I learned a lot from that. Yeah. I thought that was cool. I mean, I didn't remember any of it, and I doubt that I learned that much. But at least I got to understand what the back end of a web page looks like, sort of. Yeah, you were being actually creative, you know, instead of just yep. posting some sh- bullshit. Yep. Yeah, but my, my the favorite worst kind of people were the people who had songs that immediately ran when you went to the page. <laughs> Horrible people. I wonder where they are now. They're those are the same people who are bitching on Facebook p- groups. Probably. <laughs> yeah, or pages with the snow on the screen, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like covering up everything. Yeah. They put so much effort to making it look good, and then they have snow constantly falling down the screen. Wow. <laughs> Internet in the beginning was good, man. It was, uh, oh, it was I fun. It. it was still like, kind of nerdy, you know. It was uh, The only funny videos that you could afford to download were like Flash videos. <laughs> yes, Newgrounds. Something like, like uh, End of the World or 55. Or <laughs> 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 they were dumb things. We only laughed at it because it was stupid. But do you knew, nobody uh, would laugh at that stuff anymore. Do you knew uh, Stick Death? Stick death. No, yeah. there were these stick figures who uh, who just you know get killed and blown up. It was like the earliest <laughs> you, the earliest internet animation. <laughs> no, I remember there being like one stick figure action fighting scene where like one guy was kicking tons of ass. Oh, oh, I don't yeah. remember much more than that. I think I think I know which one you mean. It's like a black and white cartoon, and yeah, so. and he was like running up walls and like fucking shit up. That was kind of around the uh, the whole Matrix thing, you know. Oh, those were good times. The internet was such an awesome place. It was so different, man. It was great. It was supportive. Like if you made something and posted it, people laughed at it, and it was funny. They didn't tell you how you can make it better. They didn't yeah. give a fuck. They liked it because it was funny. Let's see, like this, this was the. Uh... And they were never good. Like they were never good. Whatever it was, we laughed at. Like that mushroom song, badger and mushroom. <laughs> It wasn't good. There was nothing good about that. But it was funny. It was hilarious. <laughs> I guess TikTok still has that same kind of vibe. These films aren't good. Nobody's making good films, but it's still really funny. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe we did keep that, but, but it, it got just fucked it. Yeah, it just got different, you know. Yeah, you know. Flat. Yeah, this this was <laughs> I forget where it was going. It's probably it's probably getting bad. <laughs> but you you can you can see how how slow it is too you know people had different attention spans uh, back yep. then. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you remember Red versus Blue, the the Rooster Teeth show that is still going. Oh, was that like the Halo the thing that was based on? Oh, this this one yeah. was good. It was anti auto theft. This guy walking up to a pickup truck. <laughs> See, he's 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 kind of looking around, trying to open the door. I like this narrative. I can't see anything. <laughs> oh, you can't see it. <laughs> oh, hold on. That's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just counting oh, how many surfboards there are in the picture behind you. Uh, the, and the guy guy gets uh, guy gets crushed by the chair. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. All right, so here's Look at guy. this. Here's a guy walking up to to a sports car. Yeah, this, was this, the, is fantastic. this is the early internet, man. See. Dude, this is, I can make this in like 10 seconds in Microsoft Break, Paint. Breaks in the car. <laughs> <laughs> he just falls to the floor and dies. There's garbage disposal car. technology. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even show the joke. They just explain it. Yeah. There's another guy <laughs> trying to break it. So there's a garbage disposal under the seat and the guy. Oh, shit. Oh, sneaky person coming up behind. Another one. 
What the, in the hell? The guy gets like, killed by ninjas. <laughs> Dude, the early internet made no sense. Yeah. No sense. There's another car. Yeah, See, that's someone, a nice someone, car. Yeah, it looks like a Mustang. There's a guy walking up. Breaks the window, break window. Gets in. Gets in. He's flexing out. <laughs> oh my god, he just <laughs> smacks his face into the steering wheel and he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, this this was the inter- early internet, man. You remember the G.I. Joe series? The PSAs? No, I don't. <laughs> God, this is brutal. People it's dark, man. Up. It's dark. Yeah. So the window blew out, and then the car owner showed up and just beat beat the guy beat the shit beat the guy to <laughs> death with a baseball bat. <laughs> I think the GI Joe ones were my favorite. They people just took clips from like the GI Joe cartoon and made public service announcements out of them that were like. <laughs> long maybe and they would like redub them and they made zero sense like zero there's no coherence to any of it but it's so funny because of it i've been through those videos so many times i love it but it, you know <laughs> it was just new back then and people were like oh shit this is cool this is funny you know it's uh... yeah but this is why i think that kind of humor wouldn't work anymore because it's the same humor like in those movies it's just dumb it doesn't make sense but it made it made you laugh when you when you saw this just for the first time, right? It was yeah, for sure. I don't know why. I think senses of humor have changed. I think things need to be funny or like smarter for them to be funnier. I, I think know. if it's like not unique enough, people aren't going to laugh at it anymore. It's well, got to be like South Park, where there's some sort of like meta meaning to it, or like Rick and Morty, where there's a little bit more of like an under story or an undertone. Yeah, I, I do. I hate Rick and Morty though. <laughs> just, well, that's a brave opinion. Uh, it's just nihilism, man. I'm not a fan of that shit. It's wow. just like, it's just like, hey, man, I don't give a fuck about anything. Look how how cool and interesting I am, I am because I don't <laughs> give a fuck. You know, it's just, I, I'm, I'm not impressed by that shit, man. No. Nah, oh, I don't man. like it. I'm not a fan. Sorry. Oh, you don't laugh at the pickle Rick and the wubba lubba dub dub and. Nah, I mean, I, Dashwan sauce. <laughs> I, I I like South Park. South Park's funny. Simpsons. South Park is funny. South Park uh, and Simpsons used to be funny until, I mean, they've been going on for too long, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. But I like <laughs> The Simpsons. I I used to like it. That was my favorite. I think it's still funny. I haven't watched it in the last year or two, but I think uh, the, it's still it's not, funny. It's another show that fell victim of getting political, you know, like so many shows now. Yeah. It's just kind of cheap and, and not original and not interesting when when shows do that it's and it's all the same so, jokes you know like south park is as political as it gets yeah but they do it interesting and they 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 do both sides they it's do funny it both part. way and that yeah exactly and that makes it still funny and interesting yeah like, they point uh, out how ridiculous everybody sounds exactly yeah yeah did you see the pandemic episode no but i heard about it is it good it's okay it's worth watching and it's, it's long, the first right? Episode of the new season. Yeah, it's like a 40-minute episode or something. Yeah. Uh, I laughed. I thought it was funny. A lot of the jokes were so, like, very expected, especially <laughs> if you know the characters. But it's still funny to see it happen. I like the PC Baby uh, episodes. That shit was really? funny, man. Oh, yeah. it's so annoying to me. <laughs> it's, it's just a joke that went too far. <laughs> PC Principal was funny. Um, I, I like that they met, turned him in like a fret guy, and who was yeah. extremely PC. It was it yeah, was his just... arms are always crossed with his hands <laughs> underneath his arms. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. I'm into it. I'm here for South Park. I rewatched I like the it. very first season recently. That's a oh trip. yeah, like Cartman gets an anal probe and yeah, like, yeah. Guzzlebud was in the first season, maybe. Yeah, and Chef, you know, when every yeah. every episode Isaac has Hayes. a song, you know, it was it was great. Yeah. Damn, that's good stuff. Well, once I again, th- like that was back when humor was dumb. Yeah, but it was like, still humor funny, has gotten man. way too smart now. I I don't know, man. Like when when I um I watched some movies, some recent movies. I I forget the names of it, but they sort of. I, I feel like the audience is spoon fed stuff more. You know, like they. 
yeah. s- s- like certain undertones or, or things you should notice if you pay attention, they kind of point it out for you so y- that you cannot miss it, you know? So I see that. And if, yeah, you, if you watch like a movie from the 80s or 90s or, you know, one of those uh, cr- crime or action movies, uh, thrillers, if you don't pay attention for a little bit, you you can miss stuff, you know, and, and mm-hmm. that's pretty much impossible with new movies, I think. There's everything is like, r- like, you know, right there in front of you. Yeah. 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 I, I, I get that. So I'm not sure if things really got smarter, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder. I mean, it, there's, there's something weird that like we've gone both ways. Like the dumb stuff has gone to TikTok and the smart stuff has gone to where? <laughs> Podcast, I think. Yeah, I feel like the smarter opinions back in the day used to be on the internet, and then the dumb opinions used to be in media. But now oh, it's gone the other. I mean, there's still a lot of dumb opinions on on in the media, though. I mean, yeah, but I mean, in media like uh, entertainment, right? Like not just the news and stuff. But I mean, like stuff like cinema and TV and stuff. I feel like everything has to have a pretty like smart and intelligible opinion, whether or not it's a good or even intelligent opinion. I feel like those opinions have gone to entertainment, whereas entertainment back in the day didn't seem to give a fuck at all. It was just about right. making something that was fun to watch, like uh, epic, uh, strong dudes kicking <laughs> ass. And, I'm still a like, fan Arnold of that, though, man. On a motorcycle. I mean, huh? I, I love stuff like uh, like uh, pawn stars and and uh, the pawn shops and and the ice road truckers and and deadly sketchy shit like that, man. How can you love stuff like that? I mean, sometimes <laughs> when when it's you watch fake. everything is fake about yeah, that but, show. But, but sometimes you just want to just watch some dumb shit when you're tired from work, you know. And and yeah. it's it's <laughs> easy to watch, you know. Whatever. I love the Mari yeah. Poffitt show. You are not the father, and people go. You, <laughs> you watch Mari? Fucking awesome. <laughs> oh, that's bad. <laughs> it's so bad, but that's why it's so great, you know. <laughs> Those are the worst. <laughs> I watch uh, my guilty pleasure is Selling Sunset. What's that? Selling Sunset. It's that like fake. It's like half fake, but half real real estate show where everybody who works in the office is like a total babe from like L.A. <laughs> All right. And then their, their two bosses are these like five foot tall twins who are bald and like weirdly kind of handsome, but they kind of feel like pimps and the women are like <laughs> making the money. But I think the women are actually real estate agents in LA. So there's like some sort of realism to it. It's, Man. it straddles the line. It's, well, it's weird. seems like such a weird place. I've never been there, but you need to go. You need to go. It's totally worth it. And rent a car. Make sure you have a car when you go there. That's the only way to see it. Yeah. I always want to go to the States. I always make sure I got something cool, you know, Mustang yep. or something. Or Yeah. It's important. Yeah, dude. Last time we, we had a <coughs> Volvo XC90. <laughs> oh, that's a nice big SUV. I love that car. Scandinavian pride. Yeah. Big well, fan of that car. You, you drove that um, Polar, right? The Polestar. The Polestar, yeah. I've ordered one. I have one coming soon. Sweet. What's that nice like? Car. Is it is it like fully electric or like a hybrid yep. supercar? Or? No, fully electric. Um, I ordered the... So there's two of them. The first one is the hybrid supercar. Um, and the second one is the fully electric consumer level car. Um, I haven't driven the first one yet. I've only driven the, the fully electric one. It's insane for the price. Like you're getting so much car for the price. It has maybe the smartest infotainment system I've ever seen in a car. It has fully like Android integrated Google features. So like anything you can do on your Google phone, you can do in the car. Ask it like whatever question. Like we were driving by some waterfalls when we were in it and they were huge. So I just asked it, what's the tallest waterfall in Norway? And they're like, oh, it's this and this and this. And like, it just told me that waterfall was one of the tallest waterfalls in the world. I was like, oh, sweet, cool. And we were driving into a tunnel that was like, it's called the Lardal Tunnel. I was like, Google, what's the longest tunnel in the world? And the car told me it was the it was that tunnel and what length it was. And I was like, oh, sweet. That's the tunnel I'm in now. Is it smart like, enough to say, like... That kind of stuff like, in a car is awesome. Is it smart enough to say, like, hey, that's a tunnel you're driving through right now? Or uh... No, 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 no. Well, I mean, it can, right? I mean, technically, there is sat navigation and the car is smart as fuck. So it could if it wanted to, but it doesn't do that. 
<laughs> no, but uh, it's pretty f- cool. It's, I mean, it's not enough to like have a conversation with a car yet, but right. It but was super super nice. Does it have the same kind of insane acceleration as the Tesla or? Uh, ish. Um, it is four wheel drive. It does have about 400 horsepower. I think 408. Fuck. Um, so it does have crazy acceleration. Like you do get the instant torque. So if you want to pass somebody, it, it doesn't matter. You're gone. That's great. Um, but it's not quite as fast as like the performance Teslas. So yeah, those things are insane. Way, like, yeah. The way they interpret performance is very different. Um, Tesla sort of equates performance to like speed basically. Um, and Polestar equates it to handling. Hmm. So in the Polestar, you have like suspension that you can tighten and loosen. Um, and you have these brakes that are like phenomenal four piston Brembo brakes in the front. They're super strong, really good stopping power. So it's two very different interpretations of performance, but I think both are pretty fun. That's badass, man. It's a fun car. I'm excited to get mine at some point. (laughs) Cool. Yeah, who knows? Because right now I don't have a car, and it'd be very nice. <laughs> Make my life a lot easier. Yeah, you, I mean, a car is really nice to have. I wouldn't know what to do without one at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm right there. I'm right there now. Oh, I mean, this is the worst. I'm, I'm think- shooting with um, uh, a, a car dealership on Monday. Like, a very nice, probably the best collection of cars in Norway right now. It's they have phenomenal cars. Um, and when I was meeting with them this week to plan the shoot on Monday, I was like, oh, by the way, can one of you give me a ride? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> that's an embarrassing question. That's that's not good. <laughs> that doesn't prove that you're very into cars at all. But uh, they're nice people. So I'm, I'm excited. Cool. What kind of cars will you be photographing then? Um, they have... So they have some sick stuff. Um, I know they have an Aventador or SVJ. They have uh, Ferrari 812 Superfast. They have two of those. God damn. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some crazy cars. So I'm, cool. I'm pretty excited. They have some cool old cars as well, like a Lotus Esprit Turbo that's super cool. Like mad James Bond vibes. <laughs> <laughs> um, some really cool stuff. I'm looking forward to those pictures, man. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds great. I'm excited. I'm so excited. We, we've been going for uh, for like almost two hours now. So uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, time kind of got it? away, man. Oh, it's always fun. Yeah. Happen, we'll pick it back up later. It's good, man. The last time was good, too. Um, well, let's uh, let's end it on, on like a, well, you know, like a, like a generic good question to end the show with. Sure. Uh, what, what's next for you, man? Like, we're, what are you excited about in, in camera land? Because, after all, yeah, you are you are mostly known for your photography, even though we mostly talk about other things today, which I really enjoyed, <laughs> by the way. But um, uh, yeah, like like what's what's the next uh, what's the next big thing uh, in in, in camera land? Like for for listeners who, yeah. yeah. So right now I'm working on a way to standardize. I'm looking at it beyond the screen here uh, to standardize my car photography. I'm building a portable car photography softbox that's going to change the way that I shoot cars. Um, And with that, I'm going to start doing a lot more private car photography and car shoots. So you'll start seeing a lot of that. I'll be experimenting a lot with that, um, taking it around to like nature and stuff and just really playing with stuff. Um, And I also want to start doing some more adventures. I want to get outside more. Um, The snow is going to come soon. And when the snow comes, I'm going to start touring and skiing and adventuring. So my photography is going to pick up quite a lot. uh, And hopefully while it does, I'll start building other projects that next year, I can uh, branch out with. But for now, the main place to follow me is Instagram and YouTube. Um, YouTube.com slash Kyle or Sniff My Squid or Kyle Meyer or whatever. Find me if you just search my name on YouTube. Cool. All right. Yeah. If you, you have one more tip for other aspiring car photographers. Yeah, do it. 
<laughs> just go out there and do, do it. it. I mean, there, there really is no other tip. Um, if you want to play with lights and you want to learn how to use light and bounce light off a car, use one light. Don't take more than one light. Don't confuse yourself. Start with one light and build from there. Just play around. That's that's it. And just keep doing it. Beg your friends who have cars. Send messages to people trying to sell their cars. Let's reach out to people on Instagram. Most people who have cool cars love to have their cars shot. So just keep asking. Keep pushing in that direction. And never take criticism on social media seriously. <laughs> yeah. Never. Yeah, I think that's it. I think those are good tips, man. Thanks for coming on. It was great. Great luck Thank last time. Let's, uh, let's do it again, man. I, uh, the second time was great, too, dude. Feels like uh, hanging All about out. It. Yeah, it feels like hanging out with a, with a good uh, bro. That's good. Hopefully uh, next year we can do this in person. Fuck yeah, I hope so. But, uh, I, I pray for this shit to be over soon, man. <laughs> yep. Right. We might have to sacrifice a virgin here soon. <laughs> no. I think sure that's how I'm not sure I'm willing to go that far. <laughs> cool, man. How am I, everybody? Thank you very much. Seems. I know. All right, that was a fun show, everybody, right? Go to thepolarizer.com to find all the show notes and beautiful photography from Kyle and more information about everything we talked about now. Go to Onnit, use the promo code Polarizer or use the link on thepolarizer.com. Go to thepolarizer.com and click on the Amazon button for your next Amazon shopping. Go on the iPhone App Store and find Alert, that's A-L-L-E-R-T, for food allergies, for your food allergy travel companion. That's a, Yeah, I like that. Food allergy travel companion. That's a good, uh, that's a good slogan for that app. And most of all, go to thepolarize.com and sign up for your newsletter so you never miss an episode. Follow Kyle on Instagram, follow me on Instagram, follow all those cool motherfuckers, man. That's K-Y-L-E-M-E-Y-R, Kyle Meyer on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram as well, at Dutch Diederik. I'm also on Twitter on the same name. And you can also find me on Facebook where I also post things about uh, the Polarizer podcast best way to follow the podcast is to just to sign up for the newsletter so you just get it directly in your inbox easiest way best way and that's all i got to say for today again thank you all for listening i love you all for listening it's uh, it's great that uh, the show is uh, slowly but surely growing so that's exciting man anyway ladies and gentlemen thank you for listening i'll be back soon bye-bye tot ziens